Hey yo YouTube, Flocad here, and it is time for How Do I Zhongling. Just a couple quick things before we get into the video. If you are new to my channel or a returning viewer and you haven't already, please drop a subscription. It would mean a lot and would help me grow. Also drop a like on the video for the algorithm. It does make a difference. Another thing, I have a growing Discord server full of friendly people looking to chat about Genshin, life, whatever. So if you're interested in that, join. The link is in the description and I often pin it in the comments as well. With all that out of the way, let's get into the video. Welcome to the video. Before we dive in, there's just a couple things I'd like to say about what this series is and what the series is not. In this series, I will be analyzing each unit's kit as well as discussing how I use them in game. As well, I will discuss how I like to build them, what teams I like to use them in, and mechanics I find useful for them. In this series, I am not advising you to do what I do. I am not telling you that this is the optimal or best way to play each unit. This is simply what I do in Genshin Impact, and I am sharing it in hopes that you find it useful, interesting, or just entertaining. Please keep this in mind during your responses in the comment section below, and as always, be respectful. Thanks. First, we'll go over Zhang Ling's skills, and then we'll discuss what role she plays in the team. Zhang Ling's auto attacks are very unique in Genshin Impact. While it says that her auto attack string is five strikes, it actually hits nine times. The third strike hits twice, and the fourth strike hits four times, totaling up to the nine hits. One reason to bring this up is because of Yunjin. Early testing of Yunjin suggests that she is most powerful when used with units with a lot of attacks in a short amount of time. This could be units like Zhongling, or Chi Chi, or any other unit that attacks quickly. Another use case for fast attacks is for applying elements. Because of internal crawl down on normal attacks, attacking faster and attacking more times means you can apply more elements on the field. Her charge attack is the gold standard for most polearm users. It's a lunge forward that can pierce through enemies and also reposition you on the battlefield. Her E summons Guoba, who is adorable, and will eat a chili pepper and then breathe fire four times at the enemies, each dealing pyro damage in a cone. This skill produces one energy particle per breath, so long as it connects with an enemy, and every hit can react. After the E ends, because of an ascension passive, Guoba will leave a chili pepper on the field. Picking this up will raise your team's attack by 10% for 10 seconds. Her Q summons a flaming disc that will spin around your party for 10 seconds. This can strike many times based on your positioning, but what's most important to note is that every single strike can react. This has a high energy cost of 80 and a cooldown of 20 seconds. After looking at her skills, I see her having a clear primary role as a sub DPS. Every skill does damage independent of her, allowing her to do a lot of off-field damage. What brings her to the next level is that every strike from her pyro attacks can cause reactions. Secondarily, with support from units like Yoon Jin and C6 Benny, I could see main DPS Zhang Ling actually working. Note that I don't have enough resin to build my Yoon Jin right now to test this out, but I am basing this on tests I have seen from other people. Now let's move into investment. My Zhang Ling is talent level 6, 11, 11. I obviously focused more on her E and Q as they do a lot of damage, although I did raise her auto attacks in case I wanted to try a main DPS build. She's level 85 out of 90, and these are her stats. I'm running her on a two-piece Glad and two-piece Wanderer's Troop set with an Attack Sands. The reason I'm running an Attack Sands is because I tend to run an ER weapon with her and try to maintain around 180% ER. Skyward Pride is my go-to because I have R3, so I get a nice crit rate boost. And as well, the attack speed is actually really fun for her. Other good options are the catch, which is an obvious one because of the ER and boost in damage from her burst. As well, the craftable spear from Inazuma can be a fantastic option. The EM is nice for her since you're going to be using her to deal reaction damage. And the passive can be pretty useful for generating energy, especially when you have trouble funneling energy directly towards her. Another solid option is Dragon's Bane because of the elemental mastery and ability to boost damage in reaction comps. If you're running a weapon that doesn't have ER as a substat or passive effect, I would recommend running an ER Sands instead of attack. And now we're going to move into the team building section. Zhang Ling is a great unit and easy to slot into teams. This is because she plays her role exceptionally well. When you need off-field damage, she is one of the most reliable sources of it. Note that her high cost of 80 for her burst often requires you to have some understanding of energy funneling to maximize her burst uptime. 
You don't always need a pyro battery, but make sure your team produces significant amounts of energy to make sure that her burst stays up. I recommend checking out my video for energy generation, which I will link at the end screen of this video. Now I'm going to showcase three teams for you and explain how they work. Note that these are just examples, and I highly encourage you to experiment around and come up with your own team compositions. The first team composition is Zhongli, Benny, Zhongling, and Child. In this team composition, she's obviously a reactionary sub DPS. I'm using Benny to boost her damage, and I'm using Child as the Hydro Enabler to make sure that she's constantly vaporizing. In this team composition, I have Zhongli running the Favonius Lance because of the high energy demands. Let me show you some footage of it. The next team composition is Diona, Rosaria, Zhongling, and Sayu. The point of this team composition is to lay a bunch of cryo on the field with Diona and Rosaria, and then use Zhongling as well as Sayu to swirl and melt the enemies down. Note that this may not be the strongest comp, but the rolling around with Sayu is extremely fun. The last team composition I'm going to show you today is Chongyun, Diona, Zhongling, and Sucrose. Yes, yes, I know I showed this team composition already in my Chongyun video, but I wanted to showcase it for Zhongling as well, because it's a strong composition. Note that I'm fighting Masanori, and placement and positioning is really important to this team composition, so the fact that he jumps around a bunch is a huge pain in the butt. Let's look at the footage of that.
Now for the mechanics section, I don't have a whole lot to share because Zhongling is extremely simple to play. Most of the time, you just drop her skills and swap off. But I did want to touch on snapshotting. Zhongling can snapshot with her E and Q. This means that if you have an attack buff when you drop your Guoba or cast her burst, that buff will last for the entire duration of the skill, regardless of the duration of the buff. So like for instance, if I cast my Zhongling burst two seconds before my Benny burst ends, I will still retain the buff for the entire duration of my Zhongling burst. This is important because it doesn't work in reverse for Zhongling. You want to make sure you get her buffs on before she casts her skills, not after. One thing to keep in mind is that not all stats can be snapshot. Now we're going to move into her constellations. Her C1 decreases the pyro resistance of enemies hit by Guoba's fiery breath by 15% for 6 seconds. The second constellation causes Zhongling's last normal attack to apply a status which causes an explosion after 2 seconds. Her C4 increases her burst duration by 40%, and her C6 increases the entire team's pyro damage by 15% when her burst is active. Her constellations are great, but they don't change her mechanics at all. Really, they just improve her damage and increase her burst uptime, which is something that everybody likes. Note that her C1 and C6 can be used to boost other pyro damage dealers, and her C2 could be useful if you built her as a main DPS, but that's not a popular build right now. Alright, so that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Thank you so much if you watched till the end. I just want to do a quick shout out for my Patreon. I have six Patreon members, and for every five Patreon members, I will give away two Welkins in my Discord every month. So if you want to help grow the community and help support and give back, that's a great way to do it. Comment down below and let me know what you like about Zhongling and why you like using her in team compositions. If you have nothing else to say, comment down below with Green Goose. And as always, stay healthy, stay hydrated, peace.